joining us. You're walking, watching True Talk. I'm your host, John Cancio, and we're having a lot of fun here. Psychics galore. Next up on the panel, we have Prudence. Everyone welcome Prudence to the show. <laughs> now, Prudence, do you call yourself a psychic? Because I know you do tarot card readings, so right. do you call well, yourself a psychic? That's a good question, John. Um, a lot of people feel that tarot card reading, or they assume tarot card reading is not a psychic reading, mm -hmm. but I, I can only speak for myself as a tarot card reader. Um, I do feel that tarot card reading is a form of a psychic reading, uh, because sometimes the tarot cards are just a jumping off point for me. If you have a reading with me and you write down the cards that I use and you look them up in a book, you may not get exactly what I'm telling you because the symbolism speaks to me and it gives me other messages. Um, and why would you get a reading if I'm just going to spit out definitions from a book? Now, can anybody do this? Oh, Can yeah. I be a tarot card reader yes, you if can. I wanted to? Yes, you can. Really? And I teach at okay. Columbia Green Community College in Hudson and Knowledge Network up in Albany here. Um, I teach a four-night class. Uh, for people that want to learn how to read tarot cards. So every person in here has the ability of doing this. You do. You do. Okay. And how do you, how do you, I know it's it probably take on a whole other show, but how do yeah. you come in touch with that? Tarot card reading involves using your intuition. Okay. Your intuition slash psychic abilities, which I feel we all have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can choose to pay attention to it or not. Some people will say, oh, it's just a coincidence, it doesn't mean anything. Other people pay attention to these signs and symbols in their lives and they tune into it. And our intuition is like a muscle. The more you use it, the more it's going to develop for you. Okay. And using the tarot cards is a tool to help you develop this intuition. Now, you see these pictures when you do the tarot card reading. Can they be interpreted in different ways? Yes. Okay. And there are hundreds of different tarot decks out there on the market. Um, a tarot deck contains 78 cards. Okay. And they are all little works of art. So every deck has 78 cards. Yes, to be considered a tarot deck. There are other okay. kind of like oracle decks and that kind of thing that might have 52 or 46 cards or whatever. But a true tarot deck has 78 cards. Is any deck better than the other? Totally personal choice. Okay. Totally personal choice. Like I said, there's hundreds of decks out there. There are different themes, different styles, different artwork. Mm -hmm. So you want to pick a deck that is drawn, you are drawn to that deck, the colors, the style of it. The deck that I read with the majority of the time is the Mythic Tarot. It's based on Greek mythology. Okay. Um, as a kid, I was really into Greek myth. Um, I love the colors. I love this deck. So this is my deck. Do I have numerous other decks? Oh, yeah. Okay. And that's just an occupational hazard collecting decks. So all we can beautiful. all pick our own deck. And you can oh, get yeah. these anywhere, I hear, right? You really can. Barnes okay. & Noble, Borders, online. Um, the deck that I recommend for people starting out, like mm -hmm. when I have my classes for my students to bring, is called the Rider Weight Tarot Deck. Ooh. Because that's kind of like the grandmother of all tarot decks. It's just basic tarot symbolism. And by that I mean, as opposed to this deck, which has the Greek gods and goddesses and the Greek mythology running through it. If you started out with this deck, and nobody told me this 15 years ago, so I'll save you the trouble. Um, you have to learn the tarot, plus you have to learn Greek mythology. Okay. So why like overburden yourself? Just start out with the tarot, a straight tarot deck, and it'll be a little bit less complicated. So there can be a lot involved there. Now you're a newbie here. You've never been on True Talk with no. me. No. So well, this is the first time. So we want to make her time. feel at home. So let's give her a great applause. Now, now, briefly tell us before we go into our readings, how did you figure out you had these abilities? Right. Well, there were things that happened when I was a little kid um, that looking back, you're, for one thing, for everybody, you know, hindsight is a wonderful tool. Look back at things that happened in your life. Look back at times when your intuition, you had a feeling, you didn't know why, and I know what you're thinking, yeah. Um, but things that happened that you just knew what the outcome was going to be. And maybe you trusted yourself and maybe you didn't. Um, I'll give you one, just one quick example. When I was little, I was out in the backyard with my mom and dad and we're like clearing some brush. This was before cell phones and all that. Um, and I said to my parents, I said, I feel like something bad's going to happen. And they're like, well, what do you mean? What are you talking about? I said, I don't know. I just feel like something bad's going to happen. The phone rings. We can hear the phone ring. My dad runs up to the house and he gets the phone call that his father died. Wow. So for a few weeks, people looked at me kind of strange, you know, and they're like, 
Um, well, I bet that does happen to many of us. We feel sure. like something bad's going to happen, and it does. So that is right. tapping into our psychic ability. You're just tapping into your intuition, your psychic abilities, whatever you want to call it. And I use those terms interchangeably depending upon who I'm talking to, mm -hmm. who my audience is. Tonight, of course, I can talk about psychic abilities, and nobody's going to go, ooh, you know, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, but some people, I say intuition because it's a, just a, a, a gentler, softer word that more people are more accepting of. Now, so, an intuitive counselor and a psychic, are they two different things? No. No. I use the title intuitive consultant, consultant. On, my, um, okay. on my business card and all that because it encompasses a lot of different things that I do. And I think psychic kind of has a bad rap, doesn't it? Can, it can, and it can scare people, and I don't want to scare anybody. I'm not scared. You're not scaring us no. today. You're not. No. Okay, so you picked two victims. Yes. <laughs> My two guinea pigs. Yeah. <laughs> Who do we have up there? What's your names? Karen. Karen and? Marianne. Marianne. Yeah. Okay. Mary Beth. I knew it. I'm Mary sorry. Beth. It was and close. It was close. You was going to do that though, right? I did. <laughs> and you're going to give them tarot card readings, correct? Yes, I am. Okay, so let's start. You, we'll start with Mary Beth. Yes. See, Mary I got it right. Beth. Okay, <laughs> Mary Beth. Okay, Mary Beth, what I'd like you to do is shuffle the cards for me. Okay. And just shuffle them, mix them up however you want to. The purpose of this is to get your energy into the cards and think of a question that you'd like to ask the cards. Okay, what's your question that you don't mind having the whole world here? Well, I... Yeah, don't forget, you're on TV yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> I practice. <laughs> good, um, good. I'm very interested in doing a lot of traveling, and I want to see if you see me doing any overseas traveling in the next couple of years. You do know about my trip next year, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so you'll have to tell us what we're seeing, because we probably can't see them on camera, so... Okay, but I can also... Hold them up as best as possible. Yeah, to just okay. give you kind of a peek of what we're looking at here. Okay, so these are cards she shuffled. Right. So this is her energy. These are arranged by Mary Beth. Okay. Okay. Um, we've got the Queen of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, and the King of Swords. And you were asking about travel. And you travel like within the next year, you said? A year, year and a half. Year, year and a half. And overseas, particularly. Mm -hmm. You did mention that. Okay. Um, I see the resources to do this the money to do this. Um, you need to get clear as to where you want to go, when you want to go. Really start making the plans. Okay. All right, get the clarity. Um, and simplify your life. Get rid of extraneous stuff, expenses, people, things that could get in your way of these trips. Get rid of it, you don't need it. And I do see um, three people that support you in this travel and they may be coming with you they may be um, helping you but they're supportive they're like yeah good idea good thing this is good for you go do it um, you are assertive and strong enough even if you wanted to travel on your own you could do that and not everybody is comfortable doing that kind of traveling but I could see you do that if you wanted to I see someone as a resource for you that you could um, pick their brains mm -hmm. about the destinations you want to go to. So don't be afraid to tap into that person. Now, Mary Beth, would you be open, open to traveling alone? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so she's open to that. Confident, right? Oh, yeah. All right. Very good. Great. Okay, Karen. Same thing, please. I'd like you to shuffle, cut them, mix them up, get your energy okay. in there. Shuffle and the cards. Give her a hand for shuffling the cards. <laughs> we'll give her that positive energy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little encouragement. Doesn't hurt. Okay. And what's your question, Karen? Well, I've kind of always been tied down to my daughter, as any parent would be, but, sure. you know, more so, I'm ready to break free. Is it happening? Am I really ready, or do I just think I'm ready? Or? You are so ready. Ooh. How do I do it? Can I do it? Can I get it? I'm ready. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. Um, we have the death card, the fool, and the two of swords. And the death card, and I did mention prior to that the death card is nothing more than a symbol of change in your life. This is a major change. This is not something minor. Um, and the fool is talking about adventure, going out on a new path. 
Now, to break away from your daughter would be a major change in your life, right? And feel free to chime in. I don't want to put oh, words absolutely. in your mouth by any means. <laughs> this is a point in time for you to do what is meaningful in your heart, what's meaningful to you. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks about it. And you may get some comments. People may say, what are she doing? What, you know, I mean, but don't worry about that. This is a time for you to do what is meaningful to you. Other people's opinions don't matter. Now, I do see as far as this issue going is that there are going to be people around you that are going to have a real problem with it. And there's going to be conflict going on around you about this. But this conflict is really other people's issues, other people's problems. They make sure it's, it's not for you to get involved with. Don't take the bait. Don't get sucked in by them and, and how they're feeling or how they're reacting about this. Any example? Well, when you decide to make this break, um, there are going to be people that are giving you their opinions and, and trying to, to tell you, oh, no, don't do that, or what, what are you doing, and everything. You don't have to answer to anybody. And don't get involved with whatever conflict or whatever issues they might bring up. Stay true to yourself. Stay focused on the adventure that you want to have and go.